as Jesus rose up into the clouds and the words he spoke came flooding back to some young men in the crowd. He said, I go to prepare a place. Glory. Yes, glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to take my people to a land where joy shall never end. Glory. Yes, I'll be back. Yes, I'll be back. Oh, I'll be gone for a little while. But one day I'm coming back. A lot of times we don't realize that. A lot of times we think, you know, that uh, we're not hurting anybody, but most of the time we're hurting somebody. Yeah. And uh, whenever we don't pray and seek God's face and we don't <coughs> stay on top of the mountain or try at least, you know, you can go to the valley and still be on top of the mountain. Because whenever you're in the valley, you can walk by faith. And whenever you walk by faith, you're on top of the mountain. Yeah. But we trust everything around us, but the right thing a lot of times. We don't really trust God. Amen. Uh, we don't believe Him. We don't believe His that what He has said is true in a lot of ways. And you say, well, Brother Ken, I believe you're off the track tonight. <coughs> I think 
if I'm really thinking what I think is right, I think a lot of times that we forget really how to praise God for what He's done for us, praise God for the blessings, and a lot of times we get down and out. And whenever we're down and out, nothing, everything in our life looks too big. It, it, it's like, I don't know how I'm going to come over this uh, hurdle or I don't know how this is going to take place in my life. I just, I just don't see no way out. And a lot of times that's where people take their life. They just don't see a way out. Nope. And with Jesus, there's a way of escape all the time. Amen. And uh, there's always a better side to Jesus. And that's what we forget, our God. Uh, here we're talking about God, but it's all the same thing for you and I. Because whenever we call upon the name of Jesus, we're looking for things to take a better place in our life. Uh, probably a million people here and eight people discouraged. And they followed the eight people more than the people that were full of God. Two men that had their minds made up. Two men that had their foot on the rock. Two men that had really trusted God. And I'm here to tell you tonight, whenever we start talking about this, Moses and Aaron, one of the two men, apparently they were depressed too. And they had come through all of these ordeals. They had seen God move. They had seen God bless. Yes, I have. Like he was talking about this morning, God would tell Moses to strike the rock and water would come forward. <laughs> the Red Sea, when, before they got to it, the chariots, the wheels ran off because God undone the nuts. Just one thing right after another. All the things that happened at, back in Egypt. And God brought them through. God blessed them. And now they get out into the wilderness and they're right on the verge of being where God wants them to be. Yeah. Now I'm going to take this one step further before I read any scripture. And I want you to think about this. What if you were one step closer to where you really need to be with your relationship with God? Mm -hmm. Think about it now. And in the morning you woke up depressed, oppressed, depressed, the devil jumps on your back, and you lose that with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you'd be in the same situation that these people were in. Mm -hmm. Because we could listen to the devil. We could be here at church tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use Sister Brenda since I picked on her all night. I'll pick on her some more. <laughs> She could get up in the morning and say, well, that preacher don't love me. He treated me like dirt whenever I was up there last night. He tried to confuse me. <laughs> she could. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know. And she could get depressed. Because the devil uses those things to depress us. Sure does. Like whenever you come into church and somebody acts like they're sort of shunning you. And like I told you last week, praise God. If somebody ain't speaking to you, the Bible says, show thyself friendly mm -hmm. that you'll have friends. Yes. Amen. So if you act like you don't want to shake my hand, I'm going to make you shake my hand. Amen. <laughs> and if you don't like me to hug your neck, I'm going to hug your neck. <laughs> and I'm going to let you know that I love you. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to honor God. But I look at these people, and these people, they have been blessed. We've been blessed. Amen. But a lot of times we forget what God's done for us. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we forget how God has blessed us through the things that's happened to us. We forget how God came to our rescue whenever we didn't know which way to turn. Through sickness. Through things that go on in our life. God's always there to come to our rescue. God was there to come through for these people. God was there to bless these people. <coughs> Two men came in and they were happy as larks. They were praising God. Eight people came in and saw things completely different 
because they were depressed. They weren't happy. They were scared. Fear brings on depression. And whenever we fear, we give the devil room. Mm -hmm. Fear brings on cancer, mm -hmm. heart trouble, mm -hmm. high blood pressure. It sure does. Your sugar goes out the roof. Mm -hmm. Fear brings on all kind of things. These people feared the other people. They didn't fear the one that had life and death in his hands. We're sort of the same way a lot of times. We fear what man can do unto us. Mm -hmm. Man can do nothing unto us <clears throat> that God can't take control of. And that's where we've got to get to in our life. We've got to have faith. We've got to believe. When does most people take their own lives? And they're close different. to Christmas. Because they get depressed. Mm -hmm. They get aggravated. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares for me. Everybody despises me. No children, young people, teenagers, take their life. Because the devil is painting a picture. That's exactly what he does with these people. He painted them a picture. Oh, you can't do this. Let me read. Verse 26, chapter 13. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron. These are the spies, ten spies that went out. And to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Par and to Paradise, and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. If y'all remember, they came in with a pole stretched across their backs, and they had uh, great big grapes and pomegranates, and they just had clusters is all they had. They, they had two clusters, and the clusters, they had to put them on the pole. And the people are seeing this now. They're seeing these clusters of grape and pomegranates. They're seeing how great they are. But look what the devil does to them. <clears throat> Showed them the fruit of the land, and they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou seest, sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Oh man, they're standing there holding that big old bowl. Nevertheless, the people are strong and dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Achan there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell in the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Listen to this now. The other eight are there. And the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go <clears throat> against the, the people, for they are strong, stronger than we. So two men saw a land that was flowing with milk and honey, plenty of fruit. Eight men went into the same land. They saw men over here that they said, hey, we can conquer it. Because they knew who was going before. They knew who was going to take control. Because God was going to deliver. Eight men went they didn't see God. All they saw was themselves. And they had fear. 
because they felt like they couldn't conquer it. Mm -hmm. We're the same way a lot of times. God gives us something and says, it's yours. Uh, accept it and let me bless you with it. And a lot of times we say, well, Lord, I don't know whether I can really do that or not. Lord, I don't know whether I can really handle that or not. You know, uh, people are called to do a job and, and, and then whenever they're called, they say, oh, Lord, I don't know whether I can do that or not. Sure, you can't do it on your own. <coughs> you ain't smart enough. Be stupid to try. It would. But with God going before you and paving the way, all things are possible. If he can make a donkey talk, praise God. <laughs> he can deliver us. Amen. He can give us the words to say. And we can say it. But these men here. All they saw was destruction. All they saw was problems. Hey, these cities had walls that were so wide that two chariots could ride around on top of them. These people are in here and they, their bellies are full. They're out here in the wilderness. Their bellies are full, but they've never had a home of their own. Never been settled. They would get in a place and stay a while, have to load everything up and move on to another place. Forty years. And never really trust God. Whenever he's talking about that this morning, it got me to thinking. When are we going to learn to trust God for our little problems? When are we going to learn to say, God, it's yours. I can't do anything with it. Amen. When are we going to learn to say, God, I trust you because, God, this problem's too big for me. Lord, the doctor told me yesterday I had cancer. And, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. But, God, I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to tell you something. Yes. If you don't trust God, God shall deliver you. Well, the scripture, and everybody know what your sins are. That's not what he's talking about. 
Whenever I get out of my pew and I come up and I go into an altar of prayer, then I'm confessing that I was a sinner. But praise God, whenever I get up, I'm confessing now with Jesus on my side. I'm a saved person. Yes. I know I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. <clears throat> And it doesn't matter what my sins were. It's none of your business what my sins were. Because God puts them in a sea of forgiveness. Yes, and praise does. God, he puts up a sign that says, No fishing. Stay out of that hole because you ain't got nothing to do with it. It's God's and that's who takes control of it. Yes, he does. I sent a t-shirt the other day. He said, uh, I hope I can get it right. I remember exactly what it said, but it was saying that I was a sinner, but now that I'm saved, uh, whenever people talk about you, you know, and run you down, you can look back to where I give my heart to Jesus or whatever, you know, now I'm a Christian, and, and I thought to myself, uh, or the things that I did are none of your business or whatever, you know, and I think I think all of us need one of those shirts. I can't Amen. remember exactly what it says. Next time I see it again, I'll write it down. Well, maybe all of us get us one of them shirts. Well, God dropped all the charges or something. Huh? God dropped all the charges. Jesus dropped the charges or something like that. No, it's a, it's about the sin that you know we shouldn't be trying to talk about other people's sins right. whenever That's they right. got forgiveness for right. what it's talking yeah. about. And I thank God for that. Yeah. I don't want to know what you did. That's right. It's none of my business. Yeah, That's right. I don't know how bad you were. It's none of my business. Because God forgives us for all sins. Amen. Except for blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Praise God, they're put under the blood. Mm -hmm. And they're not supposed to be brought back anymore. Thank God for a God, a loving God, that gives two men a vision. Two men out of, how many of you watch? A million probably. Mm -hmm. Out of a million people. Two men. Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb. <laughs> We're the only two. Two men, two men of God that had a vision that said we can go into the promised land. Mm -hmm. Pastor Ken, can yes, I ask you a question? You sure can, I might can't I think I know what it means, I'm not sure. Okay, there's one sin you cannot get forgiveness for, blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Does that mean rejecting God? No, blaspheming the Holy Ghost is that's whenever you talk, you know, you're against the Holy Ghost. And I don't know exactly how that is, but if you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost, I promise you, you would know that. I don't think there's a person in here that's blasphemed the Holy Ghost. We would feel that. You don't you were gonna know that off the start. I believe it has to do with unbelief. Huh? I believe it has a lot to do with the unbelief. So you're ready to believe the works of God to the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does it mean, though? Well, we'll have to do some studying on it and come back with the exact right answer. Because I don't want to confuse nobody. And I don't have the right answer right at this moment. Okay. It's a dangerous thing. Yes. Huh. Well, you're falling into a, in the hands of a, a god that's a, a devil. That's what you're falling in the hands of. If you curse him, part of Part of that, I think, what when because when Jesus said that in the Bible, my memory's right, mm -hmm. is when the uh, Pharisees were were calling Jesus a devil, and, and Jesus said, "Well, you know, Satan can't cast out Satan. Satan that part there, so that's attributing the miracles of God to being the work of the devil." <coughs> so some of these people that are so stringent against the gifts of the Spirit are treading really lightly when they say. Well, people that speak in tongues are, you know, it comes from the devil or yeah. somebody has to give the prophecy to lay hands on somebody. You know, now some of that can be witchcraft if it's taken the wrong way, but you better be sure that in discernment that you're not giving Satan the credit for what some, right. something God did in the service. And if you, if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, you're not going to have the Spirit of God in you. Yeah. So no. therefore, that's the reason I said whenever you come into this church, you would feel out of place. And I don't feel that here tonight. Amen. I feel the good spirit. So I, I don't feel like there's anybody that's done that here. And But it can be done. And I'm sure that, I mean, because everybody here that's saved knows that they felt the, the spirit of God coming and when they got saved. So I would believe that if you blasphemed the Holy Spirit that you would also know that the spirit of God left you in the same oh, yeah, sure. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I met a man one night that said that the Spirit of God left him and he could never get in touch with God again. And he said that uh, no matter what people prayed with him, no matter how they, uh, he tried lifting up God, that he was, it was just like whenever he went home and laid down, there was no God there for him. Uh, and I really believe that guy because I think he was serious. And, uh, I think he was hurt because he had done that in his own mind because he really, really believed in God. And believe it or not, you know what he was trying to do? He was trying to win souls through what he had done wrong. Mm. Because he said he didn't want other people to go where he had to go. Mm. And you know, that's something to think about with what. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. okay. He says on here, it says, Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is conscious and hardened opposition to the truth. The conscious and hardened resistance to the truth leads man away from humility and repentance, and without repentance there can be no forgiveness. Right. Never forgive. Never forgive. Mm -hmm. And that's what that guy said. He could never get forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But still. And I don't know there is one, and, and it, I think we could study it, but I don't know that there is one certain thing. Unclean spirit, that's for sure. Because it's the devil, we know that, and it's against God. Anyway, let me go on and finish up. And then we'll just look at it and see if we bring her an answer. But I think there's going to be many answers. And that's the reason I didn't give a wound. But this is a concrete answer because there could be many. Mm -hmm. Where was I at? 33? Yeah. 33? Mm -hmm. And there we saw giants and the sons of Achan, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Oh, my. So they look like little grasshoppers mm -hmm. among these giants. And most of what I read in the Bible, that giants were what, about eight foot tall? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were some before that were like really big tall, but they found skeletons of them. Yeah, but that I mean, that's called, that's back in the flood days. The flood days down there, day. About 12 feet, I think, was the biggest height of this one. Yeah, eight to nine feet was mostly, they say, that was mostly what they were. And here they were probably men of what, six foot at least, or five and a half foot, and here they look like grasshoppers among these men? Wow. I don't know how you feel tonight, and I don't know what you're looking at tonight, but this is something you need to look at. No matter how big your problem is, no matter how big your giant is, God is bigger than mm. any problem you've got. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Amen, that's what the word says. And that's what we got to start looking at. we got to start looking at, I might not be great in my sight, but in the sights of God and God's anointing upon me, I can conquer <laughs> all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Word of God says that. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to conquer, then we need to line up and start doing it now. Because there's a lot of sinners in this world right now that need to save they need a Savior. And praise God, there's not many people working to save souls. You don't hear people talk about the Lord. It used to be you could go uptown and preach on the street corners. They outlawed that right quick. You can go up there and get you a permit and stand there and give out flyers and things like this, but you can't do your preaching. They were doing that about a month ago up on uh, the squire at Lexington. Mm -hmm. But you can get locked up for it too. It's amazing. And he probably had a permit. He probably got by with it. But they can't lock you up for it. Mm -hmm. I saw him up there giving out the tracks the other week. Uh, some of the women were at the church. Nothing wrong with these things. But how many times have we missed opportunities standing around somewhere to win a we need to start conquering these times and these people that are lost. They're going to spend eternity in hell. <coughs> We've got loved ones that's going to go to hell. And I don't know what to do to win my own people. I don't know. Maybe you know. Or I don't know what to do with them. Uh, and I hope and pray that some of you might can reach them someday. But it's like 
It's water on a duck's back. It's like, I got saved such and such years ago, and I know I'm ready to go. But they living like the devil. I'll tell you what, if you can't feel the Son of God moving in your life, you better be scared. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're lost. You're lost. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to go through a day without feeling the movement of the Spirit of God in me. I don't want to go through a night. Whenever I lay down at night and I start talking to the Lord, I want to feel that presence of God lay down with me. <laughs> I want to know I'm not there by myself. It, it just, he's like God just wraps his arms around you a lot of times. It lets you know he's with you. Let lets you know that he's taking care of you. And I know some of you might think, well, he's crazy. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. It's like God's right there in the room with you. And he's wanting to just give you peace of mind, peace of heart. Mm -hmm. If we'll open up our hearts, he'll be more of that to us. That's what he was to these people. He was more to these people than what they could accept. And that's what's wrong with us sometimes. We can't accept that God cares enough about us mm -hmm. that he'll do the things that he does for us because these people here couldn't accept it. They couldn't believe it. That God's going to reach down and take the battle. We've all read the rest of the book. We know that he took the battle. He gave them the promised land. They didn't have to raise a hand. All they had to do is march around that city. Once a day. And then on the seventh day, they had to go around it seven times. And all but where Rahab and her family was up in that city, every bit of that city went flat into the ground. And they walked across the top of the wall into the city. Amen. <laughs> I heard I couldn't even done that. It took God. Yeah. It took God. And if you don't believe it, you can go where the scientists have went back and they dug in the ground and they found the top of that wall in the ground and they said it went straight down into the ground. Mm -hmm. It's there. They make all these things up and they say, well, you know, this can't happen or that can't happen. I'll watch the channels on TV and that's like, oh, but that couldn't have happened. There was no way that could have happened. And then somebody has went and found where it's at. They took their little shovel and they dug around it and then they can show you straight into the ground. Because he's God. Because he's God. Man couldn't have done that. If we blowed it up, there'd be pieces everywhere. All it was was a God in heaven that loved us enough that he did that for us. And we need to make sure that we're obeying and walking in his ways. Because we could be like the eight and the million. Or either we can be like Joshua and Caleb. The two men that came back and said we can do it. Because God is with us. We can do it because God goes before us. Let's go in and take it now. Let's not wait. <laughs> Caleb didn't want to wait till the next day. He was ready to do it that moment. He didn't need to get geared up. He didn't have to walk around that wall seven times. He knew God was with him and Joshua. They had walked into that place. They had came out of that place. And they had came out with the fruits thereof. How many times? Have we walked into the face of God and came out with the fruits thereof? And then after a day or two, we start denying God's blessings. We start denying them. We start saying, God, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but Lord, I can't, I can't do it again. I, Lord, I don't know whether I can handle this or not. Lord, it's terrible. God's able to deliver us if we'll trust Him. God's going to lift us up if we'll trust Him. We need to honor God. We need to honor God. That's right.